Continuing the tafsir of Surah Yusuf, and we reach the state where <coughs> the minister of Egypt, his wife, tried to seduce Azal Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. And she locked the door, make sure no one could come. And she was de determined to achieve her objectives from him. And Allah Taala makes a mention in the previous verse: "Kadarika li nasrifa anhu su'a wal fahsha." that we averted evil and looters from him. Indeed, he was from our sincere bondsmen. Meaning Allah Ta'ala protected him from this immoral act of adultery and zina. <coughs> so then Allah Ta'ala makes a mention, they both race for the door and وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيسَهُ مِنْ دُبُرُ She tore his shirt from the back. So you need to understand who is chasing who. So she is chasing him. So she is seducing him. He is trying to go away. And in the process, what happened? She tore his shirt from the back. <coughs> then they both encountered her master at the door. So the minister, her husband was there at the door. And he's seeing this. Before even Hazrat Yusuf could say anything, Immediately she stopped, she stayed stay to me. And she tried to prove her innocence. So before even Yusuf would say that he's trying to seduce me, go after me. Allahu Akbar. Immediately Zulaikha, she said, the only man arada qalat ma jaza man arada bihalika su'an illa yus jala wa adhabu alim. The only penalty for him who intended evil with your wife is that he to be imprisoned or some other torturous punishment? Allah Akbar. Yusuf said, No, it was she who tried to seduce me to attain her motives. So again, he's trying to defend himself. It's learned from this statement of Yusuf that it is does it does not go against piety and taqwa to defend one's honor and one is it. Someone's been accused of something. To defend that honor, to defend your honor, to defend your izzat, that does not go against piety. You know, sometimes someone has accused you of something, 
You have not done, done anything. Allahu Akbar. And you stay quiet. And we think that that's a sign of piety and taqwa remains silent. It doesn't really matter. Let Allah deal with it. No. Because at the end you have been accused. <clears throat> and if it's a false accusation, then you have the right. And it's part of taqwa to stand up for your right. It's part of taqwa to stand up for your honor and izzat. Because وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam, Allah that has granted izzat and honor for every human being. That honor and izzat, Allah has granted us. If someone is tarnishing that honor, tarnishing that izzat, we have a right because this izzat and honor and respect is being granted to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore we have a right to stand up and if someone is defending one's honor, that does not go against piety. That's why sometimes people think part of piety is just to remain silent, quiet. It doesn't want to let people do so that you actually quiet, won't do anything. Because then what happens? Then people take advantage of that and then any small thing they'll blame you for everything. Why? They know that you're not going to stand up for yourself. And these days no one else stands up for anyone else. Let alone yourself. You find very few people who are going to stand up for other people and talk on behalf of the people who are going to protect their izzat and honor. You find it very, very difficult. We all like to remain silent. Like they say, Udu Tamasha Dek. We like to look around. You see what happened? That person's been dishonored, disgraced, defamed, we remain silent. Allah. Now just think, as a Yusuf how many times have we been in such a predicament where we know we are in the right, but we cannot prove it. What can we do? And no one's ready to listen to us. And sometimes we're in a situation where the, the weak ones the vulnerable people, they're the ones that are targeting the most. Minority, vulnerable, weak, people who have no real support, they're the ones that are targeting. That's why what happens, anything goes wrong, becomes a blame game, blame that person, blame that person, blame that person. And the normal people get blame, they haven't even done anything wrong. That's how society has become. It's because we don't stand up. We do not stand up. And we think by remaining silent, we're going to get away with it. No, we don't get it. Allah that will hold us accountable as well. <laughs> when Allah will say on the day of Qiyamah, I granted you a tongue to speak the truth, why did you not stand up? My servant there was being humiliated and disgraced. What did you do? Now look at this situation here of Azza Yusuf والسلام, all alone in the house of the minister. Immediately the woman targeted him, seduced him and immediately before he could even say anything, immediately she says, look, it's him. Give him a punishment, etc. Why we should always stand up? Because a mu'min, a true believer, should never labor under suspicion. You know, those who have suspicions against you, you need to clear yourself. You need to clarify yourself. So let me clarify the accusation that you made towards me. I want to make it very clear. It was not me, and this, this, that, etc. And if you've got the evidence of proof, mention it. And we should listen. Now, the minister here lived many years with Hazrat Yusuf والسلام, and knew that. Because when you live with someone, you know their akhlaq, their character, their mannerism, their approach. So slowly, slowly you get to know about that person. And it was for this reason that he did not immediately accept the word of his wife. He knew, well, that just doesn't make sense. Look at the character. Look at the you have lived with him. He's lived in my house. I know his character. I know his piety. I know his taqwa. I know his approach. <clears throat> And it is possible that he believed that she was guilty from the very outset, but did not say anything until the matter was resolved. Because sometimes you may have an inkling, inclination towards who's the guilty party, but because you, until the matter is resolved, you remain silent until the matter comes out, the situation is sorted, and then, then you can say. In this situation, 
Allah tabarak wa ta'ala came to the rescue for his beloved Nabi Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahu Akbar. And it mentions here, وَشَهِدَ الشَّاهِدٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا A witness from her family testified by saying, إِنْ كَانَ قَمِيسُهُ قُدَّ مِنْ قُبُلٍ If his shirt is torn from the front, فَصَدَقَ Then she is truthful. وَهُوَ مِنَ الْكَاذِبِينَ And he is from the liars. وَإِنْ كَانَ قَمِيسُهُ قُدَّ مِنْ دُبُرٍ However, if his shirt is torn from the back, فَكَذَبَتْ Then she is lying. وَهُوَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ And he is from the truthful. Now there's no real clear proof here, but from this we learn circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence also is accepted in court. They take that into consideration as well. This is what is taking place here. SubhanAllah. We learn so much. Now who is this person from the family who bear witness by saying if he shed his stone from the front? Allah Akbar. It's been mentioned in the books of Tafsir and a hadith that Allah wa ta'ala caused an infant child from her family to serve as witness to this incident. So actually it's a small baby and miraculously Allah ta'ala granted him the ability to speak and Allah and he became the witness. Allah. The Surah sallallahu alayhi wa has said this is a report in Imam Hakim is Mustadak. That throughout history, there have been only four infants who spoke in their infancy when they were small babies. So babies can't speak. But throughout history, there have been four babies who were able to speak during their infancy. The first was this very child. The second was a witness for Hazrat Yusuf wasalam. The third, and the very child, I'll talk about this very child in a bit as well, inshallah. The third was the one who testified to the innocence of the monk Juraj. And the fourth was Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Another child that spoke in the infancy. A narration reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi narrated the following incident to them. He told them that when he ascended the heavens during Miraj, he smelled the most beautiful scent. When he asked the angels accompanying him from where the scent came from, they said it was from the woman who used to comb the hair of Firon's family. So they're his daughters, whatever. So this woman used to comb the hair. And once she dropped the comb while combing the hair of Firon's daughter, thereupon she said, Bismillah. Thereupon she said, Bismillah. The girl immediately asked her, whose name have you taken here? Why, should, why do you not take the name of my father the, in the name of your own? Why do you say in the name of Allah? What's this? She replied, now, you can just, now she knows what's going to happen to her there. Allah, when me and you we say, oh, I, I meant something else, man. You've got to get away with it. She replies, I've taken the name of the one who is my Lord, your Lord, and the Lord of your father. Allah, that is Iman. Kalimatu haqqin in the Sultan in Jair. Jihad. The most virtuous of jihad is to speak the truth in front of an oppressive king. You know he's going to kill you. You know you're going to be tortured, but you don't mind. You speak the truth. Today, for our own is that an honor and respect, we lie with it, is to get away with it. Anyway. <coughs> when Firon's daughter threatened to report that matter to her father, the lady permitted her to do so. Yeah, go. Fine. I'm happy with it. When Fir'aun learned of the incident, he summoned the lady with her children. When she appeared before Fir'aun, she asked that a request of hers be fulfilled. When Fir'aun asked what the request was, she replied that she wanted her bones and the bones of her children to be buried. Fir'aun acknowledged this. Thereafter, he began to kill every one of her children. Allah Akbar. Look at this. And cast their bodies in a pit or in a fire. Eventually, only the smallest child was left. This child was still feeding on the breast of the mother. Allah Akbar. And this little child spoke to the mother saying, Oh my mother, observe patience and suffer. Be patient because you are on the truth. Allah Akbar. And this child was then disposed of with the mother. 
and killed. Now look, because of a sacrifice, Allah Ta'ala rewarded in that way, and when Prophet went to Miraj, he could smell the scent and the fragrance. And he asked, and the reply was given, that is of that mother who dropped the comb. Allahu Akbar. Anyway, in this incident, the minister's wife was planning, plotting, scheming, trying to get Yusuf into trouble. And she would do whatever she can to get him, get him into trouble. From this we also learn that a woman's planning and plotting and scheming can be very, very dangerous. And women can be great fitna. And that's what the Prophet has mentioned. In the hadith of Bukhari, once on the way to perform the Eid Salah, Prophet addressed some women saying, I have not seen anything more destructive to the intelligence of a wise man than you women. Allah, the hadith of Bukhari. Then Prophet also said, Fear Allah and fear the fitna of women, the trial of women, for verily the first cause of corruption among the Baruch Israel was because of women. Rasulullah also says, women are the snares of shaitan. Shaitan uses them to entrap men in sin. So may Allah wa ta'ala protect us, inshaAllah. Falamma ra'a qamisa quddam in dubur, when he saw that his shirt was torn from the back, he said, this is definitely from the trickery, trickery of you women. Your trickery is indeed very dangerous. The trickery of, trickery of women, the plotting and scheming of women is very dangerous. One great scholar mentions that Allah Ta'ala when he talks about the plotting and scheming of shaitan, Allah uses the words, The plotting and scheming of shaitan is weak. When it comes to women, Allah uses the word inna kaida kunna azim. Indeed, the, mock, the mockery and the planning and the plotting and scheming of women is great, is dangerous. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Anyway, the minister noticed all this, so then he addresses Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. Yusuf, a'rid an hadha, overlook this. Overlook this. And in this situation that's happened, just overlook it. Don't mention it to anyone. He understood that he wasn't the truth, he was a haq, but he didn't want to create a fitna. The minister, you can tell he was a very wise person. Sometimes to, you know, suppress all these sort of situations, actually it stops the fitna, it prevents the fitna, it prevents all these rumors and etc. going on, and creates more issues. So this minister was very, very wise, Yusuf, just overlook this. How many times do we say that, just overlook it now, what's happened, is happened, just overlook it. It's just going to create more fuel to the fire. Now just think, it's a big accusation at the end of the day. Massive accusation. Yet still, but obviously he remembered the ihsan and the favor of the minister that I was nowhere and he actually brought me to his house. So therefore he could, he's always reminding himself of the favors of the minister and therefore obviously he was ready to overlook it. And then when he came to Zuleikha, the minister's wife, he said to her, and seek forgiveness for your sin. Seek forgiveness for your sin. You're truly of the sinners. As for you, you repent. Seek forgiveness. Repentance and tawbah, istighfar, Allah Akbar, is very, very important. Especially in the life that we've been guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever we get the chance, do istighfar. Because we do not know when our time is going to come to depart from this world. Let it not be that we, a time comes for us to depart from this world and we are deprived of tawbah, we are deprived of istighfar, we are deprived of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ever think, don't look at the sins that you've committed, that I've committed so many, there's no chance. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's mercy is vast. Allah's mercy is vast. He's ready to forgive anyone and anything. Until 
the last breath. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq and the ability to follow the footsteps of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam and grant us piety and righteousness and taqwa and being chaste and may Allah ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to seek forgiveness from all the gunas and the sins that we have committed and may Allah ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to remain steadfast upon iman and to depart from this world to depart with iman. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdihi, ashkullahi wa bihamdihi.